Tesla Shanghai has delivered almost 76,000 vehicles in the month of April. This is the highest amount of vehicles Tesla Shanghai has sold in April. It would have been a record in 2022, but we all know there was a big shutdown there, as you guys can see in this chart, shout out to Roland for that. But in 2023, we do know that Q2 is going to be monstrous compared to Q2 of 2022. But how monstrous would it be? Well, in this video, we're gonna figure out how many vehicles every single factory for every single month we do this on the channel every single month really we try to intelligently predict how much production and deliveries each factory for every single month in q2 which is april may and june and then we take that number and predict a stock price based on that so if you guys are ready let's get down to it smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already man let's go so starting off with shanghai in april we don't need to figure out how many you know production there was we just can put deliveries because we are looking for the deliveries at the end but we can assume that they did about 70 to 80 thousand in production we'll come to that later on in the video but in april for shanghai we have shy of 76 thousand vehicle deliveries and i put here in the delivered section so it doesn't get duplicated in the production section now we're going to figure out for may and june and as you guys can see we have daily production between 2600 to 3000 we do assume that it is 3000 but there is some news coming out as a rumor coming out i'm not too sure if it's true or not maybe you guys can help me out by putting you know your thoughts in the comments or maybe if you guys have facts comment down below i very curious to know there's rumors going around that for may and june tesla shanghai is going to be shut down for five business days so i'm not too sure if that's true or not but for this month because we'll update this again next month as well we're just going to go ahead and deduct the five days for may and june on a average rate of 2800 vehicles being produced daily if we do that with may there's 31 days in may subtract five days that's 26 days multiply that by 28 we get almost 73,000 vehicles in production same thing in june but it's 30 days instead of 31 days in that month so we subtract five days and that's 25 multiplied by 28 and we get 70,000 vehicles production right off the bat production for q1 for may and june is almost 143,000 vehicles so it's not bad if we add the deliveries or if we go ahead and you know predict that 75,000 is the amount that they produced in April the numbers ain't out yet I think it'll be out in a couple of few days or so we'll find out but overall that would be around 218 220,000 vehicles produced in Q2 for Shanghai so not bad not bad at all with all this price cuts and things going on with now this price increases it's a weird time. It's a weird time. Now let's move on to Fremont. Fremont at the moment does a daily production of 1700 vehicles. And for April and May, if we go ahead and multiply 1700 by 30 days and 31 days for May, we get 51,000 vehicles produced in April. And in May, we get almost 53,000 vehicles produced. Now I'm not aware of any holidays in April and May. So if there is, well, comment down below, we can update that next month. And then for June, I did find some holidays. At least one day was a holiday. So subtracting one day out of 30 days 29 days multiplied by 1700 we get over 49,000 vehicles produced overall q2 of 2023 153,000 vehicles produced out of fairmont sheesh not bad i mean it's on par it's on rate the max capacity is around 650,000 for fremont for now at least moving on to berlin now berlin is very exciting because just a few weeks ago they passed 5,000 vehicle production weekly sheesh moment right there that's about 714 vehicles daily being produced but let's go ahead and see how insane q2 will be for berlin so in berlin in april there was two days holiday for it so i did 700 and i know 714 is 5,000 vehicles being produced weekly to be conservative i reduced it down to 700 and i multiplied it by 28 almost 20,000 vehicles being produced in april for berlin in may this three days holiday in berlin so nice they get, they get quite a bit of you know holidays there so multiply that by 750 i am increasing the capacity because they are ramping up and you would get 21,000 vehicles being produced and in june i increase it to 800 multiply that by 30 days no holidays in june for them and they get 24,000 vehicles being produced in june overall for q2 2023 for berlin just shy of 65,000 vehicles being produced which is obviously a record i mean i won't be surprised if sometime end of this month or sometime mid this month they're gonna have six thousand vehicles being produced weekly so 
I'm keeping things at a conservative rate. Now, moving on to Texas. Texas, they surpassed 4,000 in a week. So they are moving slower than expected, but we know it's the 4680 batteries to blame for, but nonetheless, it is slowly ramping up. And so for in April, I multiply 570 vehicles daily, which if you, you know, multiply that by seven days, you get the 4,000, but 28 days, because you have two days holiday in April. Texas, man, they have some holidays coming up, man. Sheesh. I wish I was in Texas right now. But anyways, overall, we get about 16, just shy of 16,000 vehicles being produced. In May, no holidays. I increased it to 600 vehicles being produced daily, and that's about 18,600 vehicles. And in June, they have two days holiday again. Man, come on, man. I want holidays too, you know? I increased it to 625 vehicles being produced daily. Multiply that by 28 days. We get 17,500 vehicles produced. Overall, Q2 for Giga Texas, they produce about over 52,000 vehicles, which is is not bad total production excluding the april here in shanghai it's about 400 over 412 thousand vehicles being produced i'm gonna give this a 90 percent delivery rate total deliveries and if you add the april of shanghai is about 447 thousand vehicles a little bit more than that but that's the number that looks like we should be expecting for q2 everyone is saying 450 at least Let's see. Let's see. I'm, I'm curious to see how May is going to look like for Shanghai. Then we'll come back and see how the numbers will play out in an update. But nonetheless, over 447,000 vehicles being delivered. Overall production, I'm guessing it'll be over 487,000 vehicles. All I did was add 75,000 vehicles to the production because that's kind of how much they delivered. And that's what we get. Again, we'll know that number in a couple of few days from this video. Overall, if they deliver over 447,000 vehicles, that would mean... Tesla has delivered almost 870,000 vehicles so far in 2023. It's going to continue to be ramped and we're going to, we're going to continue to see record deliveries for sure as we keep going on with the quarters. Now, if you guys ready to see what the stock price would be, smash that like button. Let's go see what the stock price would be in Q2, Q3, Q4, pretty much end of 2023 as well. So let's go. So we predicted that in Q2 of 2023, they're going to deliver over 447,000 vehicles. Let's go ahead and put that in and bam, look at all those numbers come in. A few things that I want you guys to take note here is the average selling price. I did increase it to 45,000 for end of Q2. And the reason for that is they are increasing prices now. So obviously we do have to increase the average selling price if they continue to price prices. We got the credits here, we got the service here, we got the leasing here. And then here is the gross profits. Now in Q1, it was 18 point three percent for q2 i'm saying 18.4 percent keeping it very conservative over 20 billion of total vehicle revenue with 18.4 percent in gross profits we get over 3.7 billion dollars in gross profits for the vehicles total vehicles then we got the energy here then we got the operating expense and taxes and overall for the quarter of q2 we should get almost 25 billion dollars in revenue in gap almost 2.7 billion stock compensation of 400 million we should get a non-gap over three billion dollars nonetheless that would give us a non-gap of 89 cents now wall street is saying 71 cents and i don't know how they're getting this number first it was 81 cents then they reduced it down to 73 cents now it's down to 71 cents so i'm not too sure why i think they're i think there is a lag i think they're not including these price increases yet let's see we still have time to go we still have to come back and update this again next month to see what's up but as of now 89 cents now for the pe i'm gonna say a pe of 50 as the average that will give you a stock price of 176 bucks per share right now it's almost at 170 however though if they actually do 89 cents and they crush the estimate of 71 cents i mean that's a 25 percent crush you could probably see a massive rally for Tesla stock and you could probably see a PE of 55, maybe going as high as 60. This could happen, but I'm not too sure. That's why I'm going to say a PE of 50, but could go to 55 if you want to believe that there's going to be a massive beat like this is. But anyways, PE of 50 is what I'm guessing, 176. If they miss it for some reason, we can probably see a PE of maybe 40. Yikes, 45. Oof. I mean, more buy opportunity for me, but sheesh, that's crazy. 50 PE, I'm going to keep it at a average. Now, let's move on to Q3 and Q4, and let's figure out the realistic price ranges until end of this year. If you guys are ready, smash that like button. So in Q3, I'm guessing a conservative number of deliveries of 465,000 vehicles. Average selling price of 46, going to bump it up by a thousand. And that would mean the vehicle gross profit percentage would go up as well. And I made it just shy of 19%. 
you would get over $21 billion in vehicle revenues, total vehicle revenues, and over $4 billion in total vehicle profits. Nonetheless, if you add and subtract the expenses and the energies and all that goodies, we get over $26.5 billion in revenue and over $3 billion in gap net income. If we add the stock-based composition, which is an average of about $400 million worth, that would come down to almost $3.5 billion for non-gap. And with that, we would get 99 cents for non-gap and 88 cents for gap. Gap. So that's crazy. But again, if you give it a 50 PE, that's actually lower because we are looking at this at a fiscal period. So naturally, when you compare these two numbers, it's obviously less, about 5% or so. So that's why the PE is 50 and you get a less number than Q2. But nonetheless, if they beat earnings again, then I would say a 55 PE or even a 60 PE would make sense in this case. And hopefully by October 21st to January of 2024, there's more of a bullish signal in the market. Who knows? I may be wrong. Maybe the stock can go back down to a 40 PE or a 35 PE, 45 PE. You never know. So that's why I'm going to keep it at 50 PE or even 55 PE. Now, last but not least in Q4, I'm guessing they're going to finish off the year extremely strong and they're going to give out or deliver out 500,000 vehicles with the average selling price of $47,000. And we got the vehicle gross profit margin up over 19%, 19.2%. 19 so it's gradually going back up again. That will give a total Total vehicle profits out of 23 and a half billion dollars of revenue of 4.5 billion in vehicle profits gross profits at least so that's a sheesh moment right there if we go ahead and add the energy and subtract the expenses all that goodies we get over 29 billion dollars in revenue and we get 3.6 billion dollars a bit more than that in gap net income if we add the stock-based compensation to that that's over four billion dollars sheesh Guess we're back on track now, eh? I mean, take a look at this, guys, man. We're going to finish off the year over consensus, almost $104 billion, and net income almost reaching $12 billion if this happens. So let's see. I mean, that's crazy. Only half a million dollars less than last year, and this year is supposed to be that recession year. So that would be crazy if that happens. This is extremely bullish if you compare it to other automakers. <laughs> gonna look absolutely crazy eps non-gap is a dollar and 16 so we're pretty much back if this happens we're back to q4 of 2022 that's pretty impressive they didn't take that much of a hit as we all think they will take a hit if all of this pans out the way we are predicting right now gap will be a dollar and five eps total of three dollars and 42 cents again it's still less than last year's and if you give that 50 pe's it's a stock price of 171 bucks per share but again if they beat earnings which i do believe they will beat earnings then most likely you're gonna see a, a pe of 60 stock price of 205 bucks per share because at this point by january 1st of 2024 to april of 2024 we have to be back some sort of a bull market we have to be i mean i believe that i may be wrong but if we're back in a bull market 60 pe is a bit it's pretty low for tesla i can probably see a pe of 70 probably high as 75 nothing more than that unless something just becomes unless this bull market is extremely violent which we can probably see in EAP. pe but i'm just gonna say a 60 PE just to stay conservative and that's the max that I believe what will happen now if things get worse and there's more price cuts and yada 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 we can probably see the stock or the PE go back to a 40 137 45 50 even right but again I'm an optimistic guy and I am bullish on Tesla and I do believe 2024 is going to be a great year for stocks because we will be back to that bull market especially the strong companies and so 60 PE 205 bucks per share and a market cap almost reaching 700 billion dollars now the realistic price ranges that I think that could possibly happen by end of this year is in the low 200s now this could be 200 or even high as 220 or even high as 240 I'm thinking we should be at this range. My price target is 260 bucks by end of this year. But let's see how it will happen. This is all a prediction and a prediction alone. Take all this with a grain of salt and always do your DD. So there you guys have it. Remember this number, 447,000 vehicles being delivered in Q2. Now again, we'll come back next month and update this. So make sure you guys are subscribed to see that video. But nonetheless, is this a good time to buy Tesla stock? Because it keeps going lower and it is down 60% from their all-time highs and it is a great company to hold for the long term. Well, I got you covered. Check out this video. We go over the bear, base, and bull case from now to 2025 to see if it's a good time to buy right now. And if you do buy right now, what will your loss and 
gains be by 2025, 2024, all that good stuff if you decide to sell then at the base bear and bull price. Anyways, you guys have to go ahead and check it out to find out exactly what's going on. Subscribe for more and support the channel and become a channel member or getting some merch, man. I shall see you guys in the next video. See ya.